Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. On today's show, we got a very special guest. That's right. We got Jimmy Tunable. That's right. James T <laughs> from Energy Focus is on the show. Jimmy Tunable. And we're going to get into a conversation with him in just a second here. But before we do, we got to talk about the original, Greg Eric. That's Energy Focus, E N E R G Y F O C U S dot com. Greg, what do you got to say about these guys? Well, I want to talk about their end focus product. And the reason why is real world experience. I was in an office the other day and there's an HR office and they said, we want to dim this office and we just want to do tubes in the rest, but we want flicker free. And so to me, I'm like, okay, dimming, you got to do something. And, you know, we talked about maybe putting a fixture and they're like, well, we don't want to do a fixture different and then run zero to 10 volt. You don't need to do that. Energy focus has it with end focus. You can put LED tubes in the same fixture that can dim without rewiring it. You put the switch on the wall, you put the tubes in the fixture and it dims. And then the rest of the facility you can go flicker free with N focus, energy focus tubes. That's E N E R G Y F O C U S dot com. Tuning is to 2021 what dimming was to 1969. And Jimmy Tunable, the president of Energy Focus, is on the line with us today. And we want to say before we start, National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, our convention is coming up real soon. In November, we got to get you guys signed up. And all the folks listening out there, get educated, get associated, go to nail.org. How are you doing, James? I, I love it. I, I'd love you to continue. I don't think I need to talk. I love my new nickname. Why not? That's my favorite. Good. Or just be told that's... That's really an exciting chapter of the whole lighting industry, you know, being uh, able to tune. It's not something new, right? I mean, you heard of tunable light, I mean, five, 10 years back, but it's just not in people's lives, you know, and we, uh, our company has this sort of internal model that we want to make HCL, human-centric lighting for the 99%, you know, how do I do, how do we do that? You know, and it's, it's only technology, right? I think the lighting industry is ripe for, Technological breakthrough, because a lot of technological breakthroughs that that um, that will bring the lighting industry to the next uh, next level. And tunable is is one of the things, you know, obviously. So you know, human centric yeah. lighting is becoming an umbrella, and under mm-hmm. the umbrella, there's circadian, there's cueing, there's choice, there's color choice, yep. right? And Absolutely. I I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of the industry is confused about human-centric lighting and the terms that integrative lighting, circadian photo, this and that. But I think what people have to look at is practically in the field, tuning on its own is human-centric by allowing people to dim their lights, by allowing pe- yep. giving people the option to choose their color. Oh, that doesn't help their, their circadian stimulus. Well, maybe we're not talking about that in this application. Maybe we're talking about a classroom where the, the teacher wants to use elements of stage and studio lighting to improve mm-hmm. an mm-hmm. educational experience. That's human yeah, centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. I absolutely, absolutely. And and I think I think um, I think part of the reason why it has been a little bit confusing is that it's a relatively new science in terms of how lighting impacts human biological performances. Right. I mean I think uh, in one of your interviews before uh, uh, somebody has mentioned that you know uh, the, the, this, the the people, the scientists that actually found uh, the circadian lighting mechanism uh, just won the Nobel Prize in 2017. And this thing has not even been a subject for a serious scientific uh, research subjects, uh, you know, until 20 years ago, right? So it's a fairly new subject for people to really that's understand because, how it works. James, that's because hu- humans are like, with light, are like fish unto water. We're just figuring out we're in the water. Absolutely. At this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. You know? And, and, and I, I, that, 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 that's a great point, Michael, because I, I look at lighting, um, I mean, artificial lighting or electric lighting, um, you know, for uh, the past 130, 40 years, well, since it was invented in the late 1880s, uh, into, I, break, I break it down into three stages. The first stage from Thomas Edison Day to about 20 years ago, 15 years ago, is really all about 
one thing, which is illumination. I mean, you can argue that 1940s, 50s, fluorescent got introduced, and it's a little bit more efficient. I mean, it's 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 significantly more efficient than incandescent, but it's truly a very bad form of lighting. I mean, if you look at the spectrum distribution of fluorescent light, it's very spiky, you know. And before electric, uh, because before the electronic ballast was introduced, it has a lot of flicker, you know. And so, anyway, the the first hundred years or so of lighting, artificial lighting, is all about illumination. It's about giving out light, and that that absolutely transformed modern civilization. Right? People can stay indoor much longer, work productivity exploded. Right? So I think that's the biggest contribution of lighting. Right? It, it completely transformed civilization in a way of uh, of progress and 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 growth and and productivity. Then you then you got into the early two thousand and really. In the past 10, 15 years, uh, LED became mainstream. And LED does just one thing so far, that so far really well, that benefit people, which is more efficient light. So you got the first stage about illumination and the second stage about more efficient illumination. But the true potential of LED is really in coupling with other technologies to make it impactful to humans. You know, uh, you look at all the different types of studies, people spend between 80 Five percent to ninety percent indoor, right? It it impacts every aspect of our biological functions, and that is how humans evolved, right? I mean, human evolves out under the sun, right? That's how the circadian lighting concept comes from, right? Sun and the moon, you know. But a, a very simple rule of thumb tells you how bad illumination has been, right? Lighting has been artificial lighting has been. You talk about dark sky, right? You look at moon, for example, under moonlight. Moonlight is below one lux, right? Now you got you, you if you stay indoor during the night, usually you have two hundred lux, right? Maybe three hundred lux even. That's two three hundred times of natural light that humans have evolved from that have been experiencing. Then during the day, you look at um, you know the sun, you know under the you know blue sky or you know midday, it's anywhere between. 10,000 to 100,000 lux. And indoor, it's still 200 to 300 lux. So during the day, you are like 30 to 300 times brighter outside, and you have 30 to 300 of the light you have experienced as a, as a human body. Um, and then during the night, you have two, 300 times the light that you needed. So you have a uh, we're we're we're, we're screwing up on both ends. We're screwing up both Absolutely. sides. Oh, on both ends, and but that you, has been the case. And yeah, yeah. Know, so I think that's where that's where technologies could make that change. Well, the the there there and there's you know it's interesting. So you talk about you're talking about 150 years of innovation or something like that, right? Let's let's talk about that Lighting. for a second. No, let's just change subjects here for a second, okay? So people say, what's the greatest human innovation of all time? Is it electric light? Could be. Right? Is it the wheel? No, I think it's the toilet. I think it's plumbing that removes mm -hmm. that removes waste, right? And then the second one would be chlorinating public water. Okay? So those two things are massive innovations. Okay? As soon as we started doing that, people stopped dying like crazy. True. All right? I don't but, want to interject that you need the lighting indoor for the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so <laughs> lighting guys that compete like electric light. You're not gonna which, be you're, right? you're not gonna be indoor. You're not gonna be have you're not gonna need indoor toilet light if you don't have I mean at least not many toilet if you don't have right. indoor lighting. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I understand that things go together. I agree. <laughs> I, like, we can argue right. about which one. Okay, but right, that right, those things right. save the, like billions of lives. Billions and billions of lives Absolutely. were saved no by doubt, toilets no and chlorinating water. Okay, so that, that, like you say that now we're saying, well, what the, what the lighting industry is providing the illumination, but I think there's actually an innovation in lighting that is equivalent and it's available to us now. We're kind of stumbling around in the darkness to use the metaphor. If we figure it out, there is an innovation akin to that will have not maybe not save billions of lives, but improve the health of billions of people if we no can doubt. figure out what the secret is to this light cycle. 
and really deliver it to people at the right times. And, and when we figure that out and we're able to deploy that affordably to the masses, it will have a massive wellness impact on all human beings that, are, that have access to this type of technology. And, you know, yep. I, I, and it will be similar to chlorinating water. It'll like it's it'll be very simple. It's like this is what you need. You need this much. You need darkness at night, and you need these things if you're going to be inside all the time. Let's forget about going to the moon and forget about Mars, and let's improve wellness for people right here on the planet Earth. Let's get it done. That, I agree, hundred percent. I I think uh, timing is also. I mean, I think various events and development have been coming together. I only heard of this a uh, this uh, uh, sociological research with uh, uh, Donald probably. 20 years or 30 years ago, where they have they found um, a, a couple of um, the islands of monkeys. The monkeys don't talk to each other across the islands, obviously. But uh, when one monkey started washing the the nuts, you know, with water, suddenly other, you know, uh, monkeys on the other islands started to do the same thing. You know, um, I'm not saying there's a mysterious communication among the monkeys across the islands, but that's what the sociologists uh, have found out. Where if you uh, the evolution comes to an, a, a, a place where people start to affectors start to come together to make something happen, and it, it is absolutely true for the circadian lighting because you gotta need the uh, LED to be able to do that, right? It's a semiconductor material for you to manipulate the color spectrum. But you also need to know uh, enough uh, about why that works, how that works. So Katie and Lighting Research, thanks to the, all the scientists over the past 20 years, they have been able to find out why it's making such an impact. Now, what has not been uh, clear enough is enough clinical studies because there has, have not been enough massive uh, adoptions of these uh, tunable and circadian lighting um, products. But if you look at across all the researchers and obviously the Lighting Research Center, uh, you know, um, uh, has done a great job uh, in doing, uh, focusing on circadian lighting. And many other researchers, are, you are seeing more and more papers around this, but you look at studies by nurse on nursing homes, on schools, on offices. There was a study in Europe that shows that you can actually, you know, again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a study, right? That, uh, a, a look at all different offices, and they they found out that you can actually uh, save about two hours of time of productivity per month, you know, uh, with circadian lighting. So two hours is how much? You know, you can argue is uh, is that twenty dollars? Is a hundred dollars per hour? Right? But it's substantial. Even at twenty dollars an hour, that's forty dollars a month, right? A month per person per person. Sure. So the kind of impact, I mean, we all heard about that 330, 300 rules. The impact on human productivity. That's really 2017. Like 330, 300 is out. No more 330, 300. Right. That's over. Right, right, I'm done. Right. It's, That's it's like 200 now. thinking out of the box. <laughs> I'm, I don't like thinking out of the box. Or actually, actually, don't actually, like you know the comparison. Actually, you know what? The, actually, the 30, the 30 is lower now. The 300 is higher now. <laughs> no, I, you know what it is? It's inverted. It's the 333 or whatever it is because nobody's right, right. in the nobody's in the buildings. Nobody's in the buildings. I understand. I understand. <laughs> but, 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 you, but you see, that regardless, you are in the office or at home, you are under artificial lighting. You are still spending that 90% in somewhere indoor. And the impact, what you mentioned, is tremendous, right? Um, just look at circadian lighting, right? Just look at circadian lighting on yourself. It's basically a mechanism, very simple. You know, you have a third eye called the IPRGC that is receiving the light outside of the cone and the rod. And it's triggering your body to wake up or to sleep, right? I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it basically uh, trigger the amount of light, trigger the, uh, the, the secretion of melatonin and that make you want to sleep or suppress melatonin with the light, with the amount of light. That trigger your body to do everything else. That actually, if you go through a 24 hour cycle, your body temperature rise uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, and start to cool down and is the coolest in early morning. Um, that impact every part of your body. And that has not been 
a focus of uh, attention because all the a lot of you can sleep quality number one right i mean if you cannot even function according to your 24 hour biological clock you're going to impact your sleep first right because that that sleep pattern that 24 hour pattern was developed over millions of years you have to honor that actually if you if you look at the you know, scientific studies if you are in an environment where you don't have any uh, light to trigger your uh, biological clock you are actually running at you could be running at 24 hours plus 15 minutes every day so you need to adjust them that's what they call the entrainment right you need to adjust them back to 24 hours that's why a, a, a more disciplined you know um you know uh, life patterns every day is 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 better for your health but how do we use lighting artificial lighting to do that to make people more in tune more in sync with the biological clock that optimize your performance but also optimize your your health right um if you are healthier you can sleep better you're you're, you're more productive during the day everything flows from there do you think as a general rule of, um, and what you've seen that most interior spaces are underlit currently? Oh, vastly underlit. On the other hand, <laughs> people are uh, animal of, uh, of habit, right? I mean, we have been used to so much little light, so little light over the past hundred years. And, you know, I, I, I honestly, I mean, there's some genetic uh, uh, imprint, you know, as you go through generations of underlit light you know your kids get used to the underlit light indoor environment you know uh and so we have been i think human performance has, has been un, uh, vastly uh you know, under um explored over the past hundred years because of artificial lighting now we have been sort of uh, improve the civilization, the productivity is through many more hours step spent indoor, but that's not good for health. And I, I think that's the, there's no doubt that you look at the past hundred years, you got higher obesity, higher chronic disease, heart disease and everything, right? Um, because I'm not saying that lighting is the only reason for that. I mean, but it, 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 it trigger, it, it has the uh, sort of the, the, the very important task of getting your body to be in sync with a natural cycle that your body has been used to for millions of years. It's the start, right? Uh, so yeah, it is well under the, I'm, I'm in the office where we have in focus, you know, uh, tunable light. And I always turned out to, to, to mess my light and 6,500, um, you know, Kelvin temperature because that keep you awake, more awake. So, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people don't, um, a lot of humans, when they speak, they, they, they consider humans somehow separate from the evolutionary process, like as if it's done. You know, we, we've, you know, we are, and, yeah. and they talk zoologically about everything and they don't include humans yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. Like it's, you see it all the time. Okay. And, you know, I was, you know what I was doing yesterday, Greg, just to, the, 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 the lighting distributors are listening to this. will get a kick out of this. I got an order for a whole bunch of reptile lamps, mercury vapor, UVA, UVB lamps, okay, that are mercury vapor, got them in stock, <laughs> down here at Atlas Lighting in stock, wow. right? And the, you screw these lamps into the your your python's cage or your turtle or your, you know, if you have an alligator or something in your house, and the, the, these cold-blooded animals get under it and it warms the flow, and then they, you know, they get their, woo, the blood gets warm and all this sort of stuff, <laughs> right? And they, they will die without these. Yeah. The yeah, reptile yeah. will die. Like the iguana or whatever the hell you have in that crazy, I think reptiles are gross as pets. So all you reptile owners, I think you're weird, okay? <laughs> like a, why you would have a snake in your home is beyond belief to me. Okay, but anyway, you don't want to kill it. So you have to hit them with these mercury vapor lights or you can buy, you can obviously go LED, but it's way more expensive at this point. But, you know, whatever you got, you put this mercury vapor and it produces UVA and UVB like the sun. And then the little lizard gets his, you know, gets his shot blast of that, and then you turn it off. He gets 25 yep. minutes of that, and then the timer goes off, and then he's good. He can eat and do his things. The fact that humans don't think that we need that is so arrogant and egotistical, beyond belief. But, 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 but it goes, and it's bad but, but for it our health. To, it's bad for right, our health. But it goes back to, 
it goes back to what you said, Michael, earlier that, you know, uh, lighting to people, modern people are like water, like fish, fish water yes. fish, right? So, so you don't, you don't realize it. You walk into a building, you don't think about the quality of lighting unless, unless it really bothers you. There are some people that really are sensitive, photosensitive people, you know, there's a flicker, they, they really got bothered by that. Uh, they could have fatigue or, or migraine, but most people walk in the building and they just work. You know, they just start working, you know, talking, conferencing, everything. They don't look at the lighting, you know. Uh, I think that's a that's a huge undiscovered potential for uh, human health and human well-being. And with technologies, and this is part of the reason why we are so excited about the whole InFocus platform because because you can now enable any building to provide that type of uh, lighting quality that that has not been there and it takes a little bit of education but I think <laughs> but I think the most important thing is to for for the lighting industry to start talking about it looking at it uh, and and it is a it is a very exciting new market uh, it's also uh, I think you look at the whole lighting industry that's what we should do we are here to provide illumination, more efficient illumination, and more beneficial illumination. That is that is what this industry could help the humanity. You know, and with with technologies we could do that. Yeah, so what I going back to that underlit statement, we did hear that from another person too that said everything is underlit right now. So from a realistic standpoint, are we going to go into facilities in the future and say we need to add lights, we need to move lights? We need to increase the intensity out of your existing lights, a combination of everything. Where are we at with that? I think you have to be very careful, right? Because people are so used to underlit environment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and you would do it gently, right? I think, uh, I actually think that a lot of the, uh, <clears throat> the, the changes could be happening from home. We talk about like, you know, the commercial facilities are less occupied and the occupancy is still very uncertain in the coming months and years. People are definitely staying home and working from home, a lot of them, right? So uh, especially at home, circadian lighting uh, or, you know, uh, human-centric lighting becomes even more impactful because you are there potentially 24 by 7, or at least you are there during the day and during the night as well. So. The tunable side of it is very important. The amount of light you are having, especially during the day, is important. And you have probably all seen those studies where you know students that are um, that have you know that that sit next to the windows perform better. You know, patients sit next to the windows. You know, recover. And that better is proven. That, that that's not a question. Absolutely, like, that's absolutely. Not, proven, Adam Lillian from UL, like they've reviewed two hundred classroom studies. And I think it's a 20% grade difference in those with significant windows. And the, and it held true for classrooms with um, sun tunnels. Like that's what really blew his mind was the fact that the sun tunnels, so it's not the view of the outside. It's actually the light that is the, the light. Whatever is in that sunlight is adding yeah. something to, to people's ability to yeah. concentrate. It's adding to people's ability to focus. And so yep. many of the things that we're doing, like, um, I don't know if you've um, saw our episode. Oh, has it come out yet? Peter Vito on Starving for Darkness, Scott? It ha no, it's the first one has. So this guy is a, a psychologist, uh, PhD, who studies perception. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so how humans perceive things. Okay? And um, what he was talking about is, you know, the lighting industry has no focus on perception. People in the lighting industry mm -hmm. are not concerned with how people perceive the objects in their space. And mm. natural light helps us perceive our spaces better. That kind absolutely. of whatever's in absolutely. that. Like your, your perception uh, is better and it yeah. is improved. Yeah. 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 And it has, this has yeah. nothing to do with pho photo, photo, uh, um, circadian photobiology. This is just you are more aware if there's natural light. Like that, that's mind-blowing. Yeah. yeah. I, but you think about it, well, what's the difference between natural light and your indoor lighting? If you things. could answer that question, you, could, you would win the Nobel Prize. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I will, I mean, we, we focus on <laughs> <laughs> leveraging on the Nobel Prize knowledge to make a difference. But, 
but but you look at the difference between artificial lighting and the and the sunlight, right? There are two things really. I mean, you you can look at all the differences, but mainly two things: the amount of lumens and the color temperature, right? During the day outside, the color color temperature is about ten thousand, right? And what do you have indoor? Every, most people prefer four thousand. You know, some like even thirty five hundred, right? We are way under the spectrum of I have my end focus. I have my end focus system in the studio right here set at twenty seven hundred. <laughs> See, like everybody's different, right? But if you look at if you look at your ancestors going out and hunting animals under the sun, what is the optimal performance? You know, he needs to be absolutely awake and, and very alert. That is ten thousand. Here here's right? what I would tell you. They are actually Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, but you go first, and then I'm going to tell you something that might blow your mind. Go ahead. Okay, sure. sure Are you ready. ready? You ready for this? Uh, you finish but, but what yeah, you finish your are, thought. Finish your thought. Sure, but there are studies shows that even even at the ten thousand, even fifteen thousand uh, Kelvin temperature, studies productivities and and efficiency of study also improve. So people might not like that, but they actually are smarter, more alert under a high color temperature environment. And that is the truth. And why? Because that's the sun. I think anyway. that's. I think you're correct, but I think it's you're in a crude way. Okay. So here, here's how I think we should think about lighting. Okay. And y y this is a just a, a different take, Greg Eric. <clears throat> and I learned this from darkness, not from light. Okay. The problem, what we are trying to do, what we're actually trying to do with Enfocus and, you know, our competitors, you know, we, 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 the other people that are in the space, what we're trying to do is embed information into the light. Information. So the sun is telling us to be awake and be alert. And then as it sets and it changes its color temperature, it's telling us to calm down and it, it's sending signals to like it literally telling us with information it's time for you to produce melatonin it's time for your brain mm. to shut down and then all yes. those all the di all the diurnal animals start yawning and looking for a cave to lay down in and <laughs> where's a blanket right and it's time yeah. for sleep and then all the nocturnal animals are like yeah party time let's go let's get some food let's eat those humans that are sleeping, whatever. And, and so there, there, there's actually information in light and darkness, meta, meta information. It's meta. I agree, 100%. 100%. And we, that, that is what that we is... have to figure out what that information is and then how it's delivered. What are the receivers? That discovery of the guy in 2017 that saw the things in the back of the yeah. eyes. Major discovery. Major discovery. Yes. How do we yes. how do we communicate with that transmitter with light? That's what we're trying to do. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think what the lighting industry uh, has right now is a, a true treasure, right? A treasure to to start the third revolution in the whole lighting artificial lighting industry, right? The third revolution of making human centric lighting based on the researches that we already have seen. I mean, there are the, the Nobel Prize winner, but there are also a lot of clinical studies, right? You, as I said, the, there's a nursing home, actually DOE published that study. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, the nursing home is called ACC, and they've proven that under circadian lighting, elder people reduce falls significantly, uh, are not as agitated. I think they say like they reduce agitation by 40% and yielding by 40%, reduce falls significantly, you know, improve sleep significantly. Uh, these are all real life examples. And I think what's stopping the industry to, or the whole world to adopt human-centric lighting has been technological barriers where, uh, adoption barriers, where you don't have um, affordable systems to make people want to have it. You know, and that's as a company energy focus try to do. And I think, I would encourage the whole industry to really look into this because this is where we can make huge perform, uh, performance improvements uh, and well-being improvement uh, to humanity. And and what's valuable about lighting is that you have to have lighting. It's it's like it's again it goes back to you know what a, lighting is there. We have the medium. How do we make that medium powerful? 
to make to to make um, you know human um, you know impact. You know that that's the third revolution I'm looking at, and and I think the yeah, next 10, 20, 30 years we'll see a significant um, you know well-being and health improvement. And you you heard of the well standard? You know they're trying to incorporate circadian lighting into the well standard as well. I think that's gonna come. You know, and I think what the what the industry is 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 uh, has, you know there's a huge potential here, and the industry has to do is to do what we have done in LED lighting, drive the cost down significantly, improve the form factor and affordability and accessibility and reduce complexity of human centric lighting systems. That's one thing that the industry could do, just like what we did with LED. And there's a potential to do that because uh, you, 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 are, you are adding exponential technologies. You know, it could be sensor, it could be um, software, electronics. These are all exponential technologies where you can lay on top of a semiconductor technology, which is LED lighting, right? So the kind of improvement you could make is gonna be exponential as well. So you're not looking at the uh, uh, analog evolution here. You are looking at digital evolution. So there's a, a, a huge potential uh, in the next five years, 10 years for the industry to see that kind of cost curve, you know, affordability going up, complexity going down for people to adopt human-centric lighting systems. And I saw on your website, and you have a white paper on, and everything we're talking about is making sense, but the triple bottom line is a phrase you use. Tell us about that. Yeah. So triple bottom line has been a, a, a concept over the past, I would say, 20, 30 years that, um, that talk about the three bottom line, right? There's a financial bottom line, which we all know, uh, the environmental bottom line. Uh, which is you know sustainability, and then there's a uh, 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 human health uh, bottom line. So it's three P, right? That P, uh, people, people, planet, and profit, right? And um, that is really the foundation of how we develop products. Because I mean, you look at the whole lighting industry; it's so competitive that the, the, the world doesn't need another tube. <laughs> right you know there's just so many people selling that you know and and coupled with our belief that you know human centric lighting is the next evolution i would say over almost a revolution right for the lighting industry i mean you look at the thomas edison definitely a revolution i would say led is a revolution i mean you look at the, you look at the kind of efficiency you can gain right it's a it's a revolution uh, it, because it's junk it doesn't it doesn't evolve into LED, you know, it's a it's a quantum leap, mm -hmm. and I think and the no, next step and, is and like leap. every revolution, it killed a whole bunch of people, like in quotations, absolutely, absolutely, it, it destroyed a whole bunch no of doubt. people that were in the space. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that I want to, I want to jump in here. I want to definitely. So I was, um, I don't think he minds if I say his name. I was having, I was doing some educational modules for our LS Evolve program with Dr. Mark Ray, and sure. just in chatting with him. He said, you know, it's interesting, you know, and when we were talking, he was speaking in terms of the science is so clear in some areas of this with respect to Alzheimer's patients, slips and falls, this kind of thing. The science is so clear that it represents a moral and fiduciary obligation for the lighting industry to get people to adopt this. You know, I could agree more specifically with the slips and falls and with the with the dementia patients and the Alzheimer's, like the, the evidence is overwhelmingly clear that this, you know, the, these types of uh, interventions using electric light are so overpowerfully powerfully helpful to these people that it represents yep. a fiduciary duty to, to get it done. And I, I think that's where we're at now with, the, yeah. with some, with some certain interventions. Yeah, I totally agree with absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And what, imagine the whole lighting industry that are dedicating to actually make that happen, right? Um, and, 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 and you guys are doing a great job by connecting all the dots, you know? And I think the lighting industry overall has to, has to warm up to this first before uh, the general population. You know, well, I, I, have a, I have a solution to that, which is why I nicknamed you Jimmy, Jimmy Tunable. Greg, I'm, I'm going to throw <laughs> this over to Greg. <laughs> Go for it. I got to look at today's date. You know, I have a different name from today on. <laughs> J Jimmy Tunable. No, but I, I, I train name. So I, I think the in order to start 
so f- with 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 the the you know the um the dementia patients alzheimer's that's a targeted yep. group we can target that group sales wise that yep. group can be targeted um the slips Absolutely. and falls slips and falls same thing um but greg we need to get the general population into the idea of these types of technology. And I think we have to start very simply, and that is with the comparison of the dimmer and the tuner being the same thing. That you should actually, yeah. everywhere you have a dimmer, you should also be able, you should also be thinking of tuning, Greg. And that is like the, the introduction to this for the general population. You know, in 1969, what, do you, what happens when somebody, you give somebody a simple wall switch dimmer? We're not talking Bluetooth on their phone, just like the mm-hmm. Enfocus. And I, I don't mean to, to, to pimp your product here, the people that are listening. Sure. But it's super sure. simple. It, you walk over to the switch, there's a dimmer and a tuner. And as soon as people yeah. see this, they use it. Okay? Yeah. And, it yeah. empo- and not, yeah. it empowers them to control their yeah, lighting. Absolutely. And it, and then it gives them like, yeah. oh my goodness, there are different types of lighting I can use yeah. um, at different levels of light. And I think that, Greg, as a, just let me go to Greg first, yeah. um, James. <clears throat> Greg. You know, if we give people that now, as in 10 years, they're, then they're going to be thinking, oh, I see. So changing the color. Because the average person on the street does not give a shit about human-centric lighting, about circadian. They're like, who, what? Does the bulb work? You know, that's where we're at, Greg. And I think offering them tuning is such a key introduction to human-centric lighting. Greg. First. Yeah, the, really. The the key to any any product and any any excitement over something is choice. You give them the choice on what they want, and by doing a system like that, yes, you can change the color, you can change the intensity. That's a choice. You know, when we get to the yeah. point, and we've talked about it a lot of HCL lighting, is it going to be a choice, or are we going to have to prescribe it at some point? You know, right now, I agree. We can give them the choice: change the colors, have fun with it, do whatever you want. But Absolutely. do you want it to benefit Absolutely. you? Now you have to do this. Is that where we're going to get to, James? Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll give you a perfect example. Michael, you are actually using 2700, right, Kelvin temperature. You are a very exciting person, right? So that makes you feel actually calmer and, and better, right? You, don't, you didn't choose 6500. But there are people, especially people with like, a, you know, the, the seasonal uh, affective disorder, right? They need a higher color temperature, right? That is the choice we are talking about. Right? How do you make that choice available at the switch or very easy? I mean, there's a lot of uh, tunable uh, options, you know, when it comes to wireless, but people are just not using them because you don't go into a room and pull up your phone and change color temperature. You just don't do that. That's not, nobody does that. <laughs> and that's why the technology is there. The adoption is not there. You know, and 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 to not to drill too much into uh, in focus, <laughs> we have spent a lot of time on in focus. But but the, but we just won the top product of the year, right? From the E and E magazine, based on our sun cycle system that we are launching in a couple of months. And that sun cycle not only give you tun- tunable and uh, dim- dimmable, and there's an occupancy sensing uh, sensor built in as well, but also have a screen that shows you the color temperature you are at. So what we are trying to do is to start educating the public, right? You like this. What does that mean? It's 2,700. It's 4,100. It's 6,500. There are actually digits on it in your home. That Sun Cycle was developed for both home and commercial, but mainly for home. Because now you can buy it from Home Depot and you put it in your switch, you know, and you can see that where what, what you like. The dad would like 2,700, you know, the daughter might like 5,000, but they now know what they like. They don't have to play around with it. They know what they like. And they see the dimming level as well. There's a digit showing you 100% you know, or 10% dimming. You know? So I, I think those are kind of things that the industry could do to start educating the public, to your point. You know, about I, so, this so the new... point about tuning and, pres- and, and, cir- and circadian. So these are like choice versus prescription, right? But what I'm, yeah. what I, what I think, and I, I don't know if your product does this, but you know, I'm talking, we're talking down the road. I think people, the idea of the app on the phone. First of all, we're not that far away from the phone being gone, okay, and that everything being integrated That's into it. our brains, 
Okay. So like okay. the idea of that's a phone, revolution. you know, it's like <laughs> that, that's kind of going to be so 2019 and 2030, you know, um, this kind of stuff, like having an external, I think a lot of this stuff is, I hate to say it to people, but it's scary, but that's the direction of travel here. Um, but mm. this idea of alerts on your phone from your lighting system or another, another mm. app that you mm. have to download and upload and, and do this and that and configure you need a wall switch, okay? That's what you need, and you need it to be intuitive, and it needs to be easy to use. Now, the only thing I would say, Greg, is if we had these connected systems, the default, what should happen is you should put in your postal code or your zip code into it as you configure it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Put your zip code into it, and you, and then it, and you set the time, or it knows the time, or you set yeah. the time, whatever, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's already yeah. in there. Yeah. You can dim it, you can tune it, but as soon as the next day comes, it goes back to a default setting of circadian. So, that's it. so, uh, like it's so, so Michael, simple. I'm, I'm glad, yes, I'm glad to say that that's built into the Sun Cycle system. It's okay, the, the circadian lighting system. So, it's defaults yeah, back. It's you can building. change it if you want. You can yes, change it if you, you want. Can you can dim it you if you want. It. But then the next day, it erases the override and defaults to the circadian again. That's exactly Anytime you can go back. Anytime you can go back your circadian lighting based on your time zone in that system. That's the way. But um, it has to do it automatically on its own without people having to worry about on it. Its own. We call it autonomous circadian lighting, right? That's the true autonomous circadian lighting we're talking about. So it's the uh, AOT, one what, not the Internet of Things, the autonomy of things. Yeah, wow. That's the first time I learned that word. <laughs> right. That's the first time I've but ever said it. But <laughs> the autonomy of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but 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 the but the uh, but the ILT is building into that whole thinking, right? In the future, the, how much do you want to connect to the to the to other things? You know, you could definitely build in the Alexa, right? Um, that you know that you can control it. But I think the whole wireless uh, route of making lighting control has not proven been very effective in getting people adopted you know i mean you talk about color changing that people buy like uh, you know those color changing light bulbs for entertainment purpose it's not human-centric lighting right mm -hmm. um, you're talking about every moment 90 percent of your time every moment you're under that artificial light your body is having a chemical reaction is having millions of chemical reactions based on the amount of light and the color temperature of that light that's a treasure. That's a treasure that 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 the lighting industry should should explore, and should. I mean, to your point, it's an obligation. It's a more obligation when you have the technology, the gear, right? You know, so it's very exciting. I, I think um, that's a good time. place to call it. Um, I think that's a good place to call it, James. Thank oh, you that's for it? being a guest. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's, that's a good place to now. stop. Because if we open up <laughs> another well, topic, we might go another 20, 30 minutes. You know what I mean? That's good. Because we're at the forty-five minute mark, which is the power power point of a podcast length for us. So I would say, James, too, thank you for being a guest. Jimmy the Tunable. Yeah, Jimmy Sorry, Tunable. Jimmy before, Tunable. Yeah, <laughs> but before, but folks, yeah, before you go, we're gonna tell you. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. Uh, Jimmy Tunable's great company, Energy Focus. That's E N E R G Y F O C U S dot com. The original, Greg Herrick. That's right. The in-focus system that we've talked Thank about you. on this podcast, talked about at the beginning, is great. It's price. It's in the right price point. You know, and that's the important part. Is a lot of this other stuff out there is too expensive to make sense. This system, speaking from real-world experience, makes sense. Check it out. So check out Jimmy Tunable's company, EnergyFocus.com, and of course the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Go to NAILD.org, baby. That's NAILD.org. You know. If you're not, you got to get in, get associated, get educated, check out LS Evolve. Um, I know that Energy Focus has been a big supporter of LS Evolve as well. Um, lots of circadian education in there, health. We got Dr. Ray in there with so many. Uh, Chris Johnston from, from Energy Focus has, has done some modules for that program. So check it out. And of course, our convention coming in November. Sign up, get it going. It'll be on the website soon. Right, Greg Eric? It will be. Be ready. I know I speak on behalf of Jimmy Tunable, Greg Garrick, Michael Colligan. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Greg.